And guys, welcome back to another video with the M4CS. Today is a video that's very exciting because today we're gonna figure out whether or not this thing is a complete scam or we really ended up winning on this car. And that's because we're actually gonna be testing out this motor in today's video. We're gonna find out whether or not this thing turns over, runs, and if it runs healthy, that is a super good sign because that's gonna allow us to pretty much do the repairs without needing to get a donor car. If this engine's bad, we're gonna have to get a donor car. We're gonna have to spend a lot more money and a lot more time on this car. Um, um, we'll have to pull the engine out. Um, you guys saw in the last video that the frame damage on this car is pretty dang bad. This thing is buckled in really, really, really bad in here, so that is unfortunate. Um, so that section, including this entire upper section, is probably gonna need to get cut, chopped, pulled out, replaced on this side. Now, as far as this side, this side could be just straightened out and then chop and cut this section right over here, um, but I'll let the professionals handle that. For me, I'm just good at uh, you know putting pieces together in terms of frame and stuff like that. We have to get the professionals on board. But anywho, for those of you guys who don't know, this is the cheapest M4 CS to have ever left auction in repairable condition. I say repairable, but could be questionable. But anywho, this car ended at $15,000, had a buy it now price for $15,000. So our goal is to build the cheapest M4 CS you guys will ever find. That being said, we actually found a pair of headlights. These are the LED headlights for the 2018s, the LCIs, and these headlights will cost an absolute fortune if you purchase them off eBay. I believe they're about $1,200 a piece um, with modules. This set right over here, we got both headlights for 1100 bucks locally, so that is a score. These airbags right over here are, are from our F30 donor car that we had a while back. Not a donor car, one of our part outs that we had here. And uh, long story short, we can't really sell airbags. So decided to save those for this build, which is super exciting. So we have both uh, knee airbags, we have both headlights, and uh, we ended up picking up a few more parts, which is gonna help us work on today's video. And that's gonna have to be all of our oil stuff. So uh, we've ended up picking up these oil lines from BMW, brand new. Um, that's mainly because I honestly couldn't find them used. This one right over here, we found it used, um, but it was like almost the price of a new one with my whole sell discount so I decided to just get brand new oil lines we got the OEM brand new seals on it as too the little gaskets and then we ended up picking up this oil cooler again for a killer deal this is the OEM oil cooler on eBay it was going for like somewhere in the ballpark like 450 to 600 dollars we ended up picking this thing up locally for 200 dollars so again our goal is to build this CS as affordably as possible while using as much OEM parts as possible speaking of OEM I think we actually found a CS carbon fiber hood an OEM one in white about eight hours from here so we might have to go cop that later in the end of this video. You guys will find out here in a minute. Um, but yeah, so the last thing we need is oil as well. Uh, this car only takes 5W30, surprisingly. I thought it's gonna use 10W60 like the E92 M3 does, but I'm assuming because this is a inline six, not a V8, um, it just takes 5W30. So we got the oil, we got all the oil cooler stuff. Let's go ahead, drain the oil, put in all the oil cooler stuff, and get this bad boy started. This is the moment where we're gonna find out whether or not this build is gonna cost us an arm and a leg, or it's gonna cost us just a leg. So we'll find out. we have the two new oil lines connected to our new new to us used oil cooler uh, so at this point I'm gonna go ahead drain all the oil from the engine um, and just start putting in the new oil uh, as far as the filter goes I don't know if I have a filter in stock for this engine I'll check I do have some filters around here if it's not the right one it's not a big deal probably end up doing another oil change on this car uh, once the whole repairs are done anyways um, so this is just kind of like a temporary 200 top 200 mile oil change for this car. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and get our oil drain pan and just start draining the fluids. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but good news is there is oil in the car, which is great news actually, which means there isn't a hole in the block that I'm not seeing. That's absolutely amazing. I'm going to just prop this open real quick, just so, you know, the oil comes out smoother. But anyways, that's great news. Super happy about that at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna let the oil fully drain out. Probably put a new seal on this, uh, this, this bolt to make sure it's not leaking from the bottom of the car. Slap that bolt back in. I 
I did leave the car on a trickle overnight, so the battery should have enough juice. Um, now, obviously, it's not a proper way to, uh, you know, charge a lithium battery, but at the same time, it's enough to get it started. Once it runs um, a few times, it'll charge itself and it won't be a big deal. Again, it's 2020 battery, not really too worried about it. Um, but yeah, as of this point, we do have the cooler on there. We do have the oil in the engine, so it is safe to turn it on. Um, I am going to be kind of a little bit afraid that the coolant might start gushing out everywhere just because, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, technically, I don't know if the coolant will gush out everywhere because uh, the the water pump is not really connected on the belt, and I think it's a manual water pump, so we might not have any coolant gushing. <laughs> we, we might not have any. We might not have any coolant gushing, um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, let me go ahead and clean up around here so my OCDness uh, doesn't bother me, and then let's go ahead and give it its first crank. So at this point, guys, everything's kind of cleaned up out of the way. I did keep a couple things around me just to make sure if anything starts gushing out, we can uh, capture the oil. Oh, look at that. See that M4? Ooh, that looks good. All right, hop in the interior. Um, so yeah, let's just see. It looks like so far the lights are working. The lights on the dash are coming up as well. It says M4, which is pretty sick here. Uh, guys, this CS is just, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see, is there power on this car? One more time. Put the key next to the thing, it's probably dead. And then click the start button. Yeah, the battery's super dead on that key fob, but let me make sure that's the right key. Imagine that's not the right key. <laughs> it's not the right key. <laughs> Hold on guys. So now that we have the right key, let's go ahead and give that a shot one more time. Hopefully that works out. Ooh, okay. Well, I heard the engine kind of like click over a few times. 54,000 miles, that's what I'm talking about. Now I'd be lying if I told you guys I wasn't too worried about it. Worst comes to worst, we'll end up parting her out, but realistically, um, we'll either break even or just make a little bit of money off this car, which is not where we're trying to get at. Obviously, if the engine's bad, there's not really much more left of this car to sell. Um, so yeah, that would absolutely suck. But if it does run, not only are we not parting it out, but we're gonna be putting this bad boy back on the road, which is super exciting. So now that I have my Taco Bell cup, my wife's in the car, we're gonna go ahead, give it his first crank up, fingers crossed, guys. All right. My heart hurts, guys. Hold on, hold on. I gotta take my phone out for this, too. My heart hurts so much. Let me put it on jump, too, just in case. All right. <laughs> Send it. Ooh. Uh, doesn't sound like it wants to turn over. Is the lights flickering or no? So, guys, that's not really looking too good. I'm gonna try to turn the, the engine over by hand and hope this thing is not seized. It's turning. It doesn't feel like the rods are shot. Yeah, it's turning. It, it did a full 360. There's a reason why it's not starting. Maybe it needs the mass airflow sensors connected. Let's go ahead and connect the mass airflow sensors, guys. Maybe that's it. I feel like something is telling the car not to start. So guys, even with my trickle charger on jump mode, the car still doesn't want to start. So that being said, I don't know if it's the trickle itself or it just, I don't know if it's the battery. I don't know if it needs more juice, but we got this right over here. A company sent it out to me. Um, we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. If it actually jumps this car, I'm gonna be super happy because uh, then we'll know whether or not it's the battery. Um, if it still doesn't start even with this jump pack, then that means uh, it's definitely not the battery because this thing is a brand new jumper um, and it should definitely get this thing started if it was the battery. So positive on positive, negative on negative. All right, guys, moment of truth. Shout out to this company that sent me out this jump pack. Ooh, these 
Yeah, that's probably all the oil and fluids coming out. But shout out to the company that sent me out this jump pack. I was like, if this jump pack, a brand new jump pack, doesn't get the car started. It was guys, battery? Guys, I had this car trickled all night. Check out that link. <laughs> What the heck? I'm gonna have this product linked down below. Shout out to them for sending it out. A couple unique things about this product is the fact that it has a big LED screen, a 3.7 inch LED screen that looks really nice and is easy to use. It has a 6,000 A peak cranking amps and it also has a 65 watt speed charge with four ports. Guys, this thing is the best portable jumper I've ever used because I didn't think anything can get this thing started. <laughs> Bro, that sounds so good. Bro, she's solid. No check engine light either. I don't know if you saw that. No, I mean, there must be something wrong. There's no... No, no, no. Like, it, it, we, I connected the intakes and everything, so there was no check engine light. Really? Yeah, so literally the engine's solid. I, I put the car in reverse. I put it in drive. It went in gear on both gears, too. Oh, dude, ignore it. It sounds so good. Bro, are you ready to get to see us on the road? Oh, my God. Am I? <laughs> I, I, I do... I I cannot believe the microphone was turned off, guys, but basically that jump pack saved the day, so shout out to them. I am so, so, so happy that this engine is good, um, not only for myself, because this car is no longer now mine. I called my brother, it is officially his car. He's taking ownership of it, and he's super excited for it. He was kind of afraid when buying it. He's like, dude, if it doesn't work out, can you just part it out? I was gonna just take it off his hand, so that burden is no longer on him, uh, but now that it runs and drives, uh, I mean, at least put it. I put it in gear. It does go in reverse, it does go in neutral, it does go in drive, and now, officially, Officially, it does start up. So again, I'm so, so, so happy for him. It's gonna be such a sick build here on this channel. I know a lot of you guys are like, Nor, come on, dude, with the whole Tesla thing. A lot of you guys are actually supportive about it, and I'm still gonna be modifying the Tesla on this YouTube channel, but we're also gonna be modifying a beautiful M4 CS. I mean, talk about variety, guys. A little bit of both worlds. Um, absolutely love it, and I'm just super stoked for it. Now, now that we kinda got the headlights on a good deal, we still need so many more parts. We need a CS hood, we need a CS front lip, front bumper, fenders, not to mention the entire front clip, and not to mention a lot of stuff in the interior dashboard airbag um thankfully for me i'm gonna throw a few pictures right over here guys i found a guy parting out a cs in white and it's an f80 though unfortunately but a cs in white down in la again i'm always going to la for the good deals six hour drive i'm heading out there first thing in the morning 6 a.m tomorrow to go pick up all the parts for this cs uh locally i cannot believe we found a white cs guys do you guys know how hard it is to find a hood, a CS hood, let alone a white CS hood uh, from BMW? They want like eight or $9,000 just for the hood unpainted. So uh, again, it's kind of crazy. We're getting a killer deal on everything. I don't want to jinx it, so we're going to head down there, buy everything. It's still an arm and a leg. It's almost actually the price of this car for all the parts that we're getting, but it's a good deal. It's a good deal. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. I'm going to go ahead and take the truck, get everything ready, um, head straight home, work on some editing, and then I'll see you guys first thing in the morning and heading out to LA to get some CS parts. And good morning, guys. It is another morning. We are finally heading out to LA once again. I feel like we're going down there, honestly, every single week getting something, but there's always a good deal in LA. I don't know why, but uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So the approximate drive is five hours without any stops, and that's obviously gonna change because we gotta go to the bank, get some money. We also have to get some food. So yeah, today's gonna be a long day, but once I show you guys what we're getting, you guys are gonna understand why this drive is absolutely worth it. And guys, after about five hours of driving, we got our net, we have our bed ready to go. We're just waiting on the guy to show up. We're literally in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if you guys can see the mountains up there. Literally in the middle of nowhere. Um, we got the cash, which I'm a little worried about. I'm not gonna lie, having this kind of money in this area, not too comfortable, but there is a lot of truckers and I'm assuming they have guns. So they might be able to protect and serve, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of truckers here, I, I parked here in plain sight rather than back there where no one can see us. Anyways, at this point, they are about 16 minutes out, bro. My heart's kind of hurting. Is yours too or not? Nah? I know, I'm, I'm a little stress, right? A little stress. It was a long drive. so Long drive, big transaction, hoping everything goes smooth, and then we have a long drive back home, too. So it's worth it, though. It's worth it. <laughs> it's, it's it worth if it. everything pans out the way we want it. You know, you know, like when you buy a bunch of parts, they give us the bundle deal? Yeah, the bundle deal. So that's that, what we did. So that's what we we're hoping for. You know, everything goes well. Hopefully, the parts aren't damaged. Like, sometimes people lie about the condition of, the, like, the front bumper or the hood. We'll see. Yeah, just one of the photos. He said that the hood's 10 out of 10, but the hood looked like it had, like, a fat nick in it. Um, so obviously it looked like that in the photo, but he's saying it's 10 out of 10. So, I mean, the thing is some people consider 10 out of 10, <laughs> you know, completely different than what other people yeah. call 10 out of 10. So he might say this is 10 out of 10 for used condition. So we'll have to see. 
But uh, anywho, he should be here pretty soon. I'll show you guys once we get over. Hopefully everything loaded up and everything hopefully goes soon. Or we'll talk to you guys once we get robbed. So it's either or. Um, <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, guys, so we just got out of there. It is super late, it is 9 p.m. They showed up in an absolutely ridiculous time, stood me up, me and my brother, for three and a half hours, guys. And then they had the audacity to argue with us. We'll tell you guys the entire story when we get back. We have another five hour drive to actually make it home. Very stressed out, very pissed off. We didn't get exactly what we wanted either. Uh, we got a lot of the stuff, but a lot of the stuff was missing. So just pure negligence. I don't even have to say what happened exactly. They basically tried screwing us over in person. And again, they stood us up. We'll get into all those details when we get back. Let's just get home. We have a long drive ahead of us. Again, five hours. Oh man, all right, whatever. At least we got some of the stuff. We'll talk, we'll talk to you guys as soon as we get back. And this is us the next day. We're finally back at the shop, guys. Yesterday was an absolute catastrophe. I'm gonna get into all that hopefully in a little bit, but for now, I wanna go ahead and get everything unloaded, get into the shop and show you guys what we got exactly uh, because we got a smoking good deal. This right here, guys, is our CS Alpine White front bumper for our M4 CS. I cannot believe, guys, you found another CS in LA um, that was literally, I mean, the, the fact that we found a CS part out to begin with and then found a CS part out that's an Alpine White was just absolutely insane. Um, the bumper is actually the exact same. This grill says M3. We're gonna have to swap out this grill um, with one that says M4. Um, but it's this bottom lip right over here that costs from BMW, I believe, $1,800. So this little lip does have some imperfections. You guys come over here. Does have some cracking, um, you know, normal wear and tear, honestly, for having a lip in a car that's super low. Um, that's still right there in this condition, is still worth like, I think like $1,000, which is kind of crazy. We got this entire bumper for $400 with all the grills, with the PDC sensors. I mean, I know just this grill alone is like $80. So it's just super crazy how we got this thing for $400 with absolutely everything paint matched to the car. Now, there are some paint imperfections right over here. Uh, we might end up repainting this bumper. We'll really have to see. I don't really want to repaint it um, just because we're trying to make this car as much of a budget build as possible but then it is a CS so it's probably worth restoring it to the absolute fullest. You guys saw me earlier pulling out the CS Alpine White Hood. We were gonna go with it, just a normal GT um, style hood onto the CS, but then we found this hood, exact same color, actual CS. It was just calling our name. It was like, you know, $3,000, but those hoods from BMW are $8,000. So $3,000 guys. Good deal, good deal. So this storage rack, I just went ahead and built this specifically for the M4 CS. I wanna get all the parts over here and ready to actually start rebuilding this thing. You guys saw earlier in the video, we got this bad boy running, which is super motivational, which means this car is gonna get back on the road. And for those of you guys who kind of skipped through the video, this build, we're actually building it for my brother, um, which means he's not gonna be selling it as quick as I normally sell my car. So this car is gonna be on the channel more often. He wants to mob out with us as a complete car enthusiast gang. This E91 M3 is my build, as you guys know, this is my my custom build, my car enthusiast car. My wife has her 335 IS in the back. Um, so yeah, we're kind of getting all of our cool little cars together. We have the IS custom, you know, limited production car, M3 special custom car. Now we have a CS chilling over here. Very, very, very rare and uncommon car, which is super sick. So yeah, we're gonna have a cool little community here pretty soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think, you know, I'm happy for my brother. I'm happy that he was able to cop this car. I'm happy that we were able to find all these good deals for him because he was on a serious budget and he literally was like, Nor, let's go ahead and just get a standard hood because these GTS hoods are absolutely expensive. Come check this out, guys. This weave is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, thankfully, I'm not seeing any damage on this hood. If you guys look over here as well, we have the actual BMW logo right there. This is a factory CS hood, um, again, Absolutely gorgeous. This hood, like I was saying earlier, 8,500 with my discount. Um, this thing's actually paint matched too. So it's just kind of crazy. It's probably a $9,000 hood we got for $3,000. So again, very expensive hood still, but considering what this car is, I think we made the right move. Let me know down below, guys. Um, and then obviously we have the original CS bumper. Now, anyways, that, those are kind of the main two pieces to why we actually drove six hours um, to go get these parts. Everything else is just added bonuses. And I actually got something for the E91 M3 while I was over there as well. I couldn't help myself, I couldn't help myself. It was just, it was just such, a, such a good deal.
So after unloading literally everything inside the truck, I have some stuff behind you guys, but the primary stuff I wanna show you guys is for the M4CS, which is all of this stuff. It's kind of insane to say that we pretty much picked up everything you guys see in front of your faces for $5,500. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is this dashboard right over here. This is the exact same dashboard I have on my brother's M4CS with the white stitching, but this one in particular has the heads up display cutout, which we're actually gonna be retrofitting onto my brother's car because it already has a cracked windshield, the dashboard's literally blown. If you're not telling me this is the best time to do a heads up display retrofit, I don't know when is. I mean, we have to replace the windshield, so we'll do the heads up display windshield retrofit, and then we have to replace the dashboard, so you might as well put in the heads up display thing itself. So, you know, at that point, I just convinced my brother, he was all for it. We got the exact dashboard, already comes with the airbag as well. Um, this we ended up picking up for, I believe, $400. The cheapest one I could find anywhere else was like $800 to $1,000, so for 400 bucks, that's a bargain. The AC compressor that was damaged on our car, uh, we ended up picking up this bad boy for only 50 bucks. So that is again, a huge cop. Now coming around over here is the subframe. We actually bought this subframe for $400 and uh, we paid for one of these, uh, you know, tie rods, a hundred bucks. So usually about $200 for the tie rods, $500 for the subframe. But then you threw in a steering rack, an electric steering rack with an extra tie rod. And long story short, this value right here is already about $1,000. We paid about $400 for it. Actually, no, about $1,100. We paid $400 for it. So again, a very, very, very good cop. We're actually gonna go ahead and resell this and pretty much recoup our money on the subframe. So pretty much the subframe ends up being completely for free. So that is a really good sign. Uh, and we actually have a lot of actually extra M4 parts we're actually gonna start selling uh, because we got a lot of doubles through this whole transaction. So that's pretty good for us. Um, these extra brackets right over here on both sides, uh, we needed those and he left it on the subframe. Those are probably an additional 50 to $60 a pop on eBay. Got them for free. Good cop right there. Coming around over here, we have a bunch of plastics. We got these hinges for $100 for the pair. I think that was about right for, in terms of price, but we wanted the white ones. I couldn't find white ones anywhere else, so I paid the 100 bucks for those. Um, we have a bunch of under shielding plastics. Uh, that's like the radiator support plastics. Um, these are the, uh, you know, cooler plastics, not to mention these two coolers. We got an extra oil cooler now. We got the entire cooler assembly with fan and everything. Um, all these coolers you guys see right here, we paid $500. This right here is about like 14 to like 1400 bucks to like, I think like two grand. So for, for 500 bucks, I think we won right there. He gave us these for free. These are about like 50 to 60 bucks each. So that is really good as well. We got the carbon brace chilling right here. We got this bad boy, I believe for $300. We did kind of pay for it, um, but it's still $200 off considering, um, you know, if you bought it off eBay, we got $200 plus tax more. Uh, these intakes, we got them both for 150. These retail on eBay for about $300. Um, and again, I can go on with as much plastics and extra things we have here. These are the two front fender liners that we needed. They're about a hundred bucks a pop. We actually just threw those in for free, so again, Really worth the drive. We got a lot of good deals right there. Um, and not to mention again, we got the CS hood right here and then the CS front bumper. Now, I don't know if I actually mentioned this in the video before, but my brother also got LCI headlights for his car for 1100 bucks. These retail for about 2,300 bucks on eBay. We found those on Facebook for 1,100 bucks. We're literally like, like Facebook garage shopping. Like we're going to people's homes, knocking on doors. Do you have any M4 CS parts? And we're just buying them like for, for steal of a deal. So super happy with all of that stuff. We actually got these airbags um, from one of our, uh, I think I actually mentioned that as well. So don't worry about that. But long story short, what you guys see everything right here for the CS, including the headlights, we paid about $6,500 for. So I think that's a smoking good deal, especially considering this hood alone is an $8,000 hood and it's paint matched. So, I mean, tell me, tell me we didn't win, guys. Tell me we didn't win. I mean, I don't saying, but I think we won. You know what I'm saying? Anywho, now I actually decided to pay a little bit out of my pocket. When I mean a little out of my pocket, I took a small loan from my brother because uh, I had to get something that wasn't necessary, but is amazing. It's amazing. It's gonna make the E91 M3 an absolute dream of a build. Uh, and it's gonna be able to keep up with this bad boy, at least aesthetically in the interior. I'll show you guys what I mean. So coming around over here, guys, I went ahead, took a small loan of $2,500 for uh, this bad boy over here. I have an addiction, guys. You guys saw with the Atlantis Blue F80, we had red, um, red F80 seats, they looked absolutely gorgeous. We ended up upgrading to the competition seats. We got them for $1,000 for the pair. Actually, I think we got them for $2,500, but I sold my pair for $1,500, so it ended up being $1,000, you guys know what I mean. You guys do the math, you know, but. I paid $2,500 for red competition seats back then in LA. Again, killer deal. I, I drove all the way to LA to get that deal. I drove all the way to LA again to pick up these bad boys. Now, these are not your normal competition seats. These bad boys are the M3 Competition CS seats. Very rare. For those of you guys who uh, 
you know, no anything about CSs, which is, you know, that bad boy sitting right over there. I think they're like, I don't know, they're a few hundreds or maybe a few thousand, but they're very, very, very minimum. Uh, I'll probably get the exact number, throw it somewhere down below over here. Um, the M4 CS, I believe, is more sought out for uh, just because the door cards have the straps um, and they have a couple other things that make the M4 more of a, like a, a car enthusiast track car rather than the sedan version, which is the M3 CS. Long story short, doesn't matter to me because I just needed the seats. So we got the seats, killer deal, 2,500 bucks, all the front and rear, so they finally match. You guys saw we just literally retrofitted those two seats inside of my, uh, we got Silverstones retrofitted in my E91 M3. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is literally just pull them out, take off the harnesses that we already did, slap them on those seats, put those back in there, and check these out. They already got the uh, M3 badging on there, so. You know, to, to fit the M3 build. It was meant to be, you know what I'm saying? Right, babe? <laughs> Feel, you know, I mess with the vibes. <laughs> Anywho, so that's the situation with that. Plus, again, we didn't have seats on that car, rear seats. Now we have rear seats. So we're gonna retrofit that into the wagon as well. So our front and rear seats are gonna be matching. And uh, I don't know if you guys know about CSs, but the interiors, um, we can just go with black door cards. So that makes it super easy to get the door card situation done. And then that will look a-okay. Now this over here uh, was all for free. He literally just gave us this for free. It was in bags. I didn't even see this until we pretty much got back home. And uh, I started hallucinating a little bit because I was like, oh my God. It's meant to be, it's meant to be. Maybe I should build an F81. <laughs> now that's way out of budget, but I was literally considering I'm building an F81 M3 just because they literally just gave us a CS center console. For those of you guys who don't know how a CS center console looks, I'll show you guys that literally in a, little, in a minute. It's kind of crazy that we have one to reference right over there. Um, but this center console on eBay, I mean not eBay, because they don't, can't even find, actually, there was one on eBay, right? Yeah. There was one on eBay for $2,500 complete. This at BMW, just the way you see it, is $2,000. Insane, absolutely insane, very expensive. This is the e-brake boot that goes along with it, the Alcantara CS e-brake boot. This bad boy does need some cleaning, but it's $500 from BMW. So we got 2,500 bucks for free right there. And not to mention, we got the CS climate control switches. These are the manual switches. You guys can see there's no display right here. It's all manual. It's got like the little, you know, manual vibe to it because it's a CS. So that is super sick. I believe these brand new are about $700, uh, but I did find them used going for about three to 400 bucks, but still $3,000. So very, very, very happy. If you guys think about it, I got my money back already. <laughs> But realistically, I was gonna re I was actually gonna sell these and recoup my money on the seats. But then I was like thinking, maybe an F81 one day. Let me know down below, guys. Maybe just sell them. Maybe F81 one day. Two thousand dollars versus eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> but wouldn't this story be cool that we actually build an F81 M3 because we have these three parts right here? <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be so sick that I go ahead and drop seventy thousand dollars to build that car because I started with these? The story is pretty cool. I'm gonna so, leave. <laughs> I know, I need to finish this one first. We gotta get this bad boy painted. <laughs> Without further ado, with the power of editing, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff rearranged for a thumbnail. So what you guys see behind me is the power of editing, but also everything, not everything actually, not everything. I wish this was everything. But I mean, mostly everything we need to get this CS, this beautiful 2020 CS back on the road. That's insane, that's just insane. I mean, I, the R8 was probably the best budget rebuild I've ever done. But now this might be, this might be it. This just might have to. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see when we're done with it. Let's not jinx it because so far we're doing all right. But imagine when they tell me with the whole frame shop thing, hey man, you're gonna need an entirely new frame. I'll be like, oh man, that's, that's a little rough. So now the story I was promising you guys earlier about how we actually got all these parts for a killer deal. I found this Facebook listing and uh, it was, you know, it was pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I saw an F80 M3 CS in LA County, which, which is approximately six hours away from us, and it was the exact same color as our project car right over here. So I knew if this guy responded, I was gonna get the parts regardless. Little did I know though, he was having the parts for an absolute killer of a deal. It literally felt like a garage sale. I went ahead and sent him a full parts list of everything that I need for this M4 CS because his car was actually rear-ended. He pretty much had every single front end part that we needed. Um, it's just kind of hard to translate because I literally told him we need every single piece on the entire front end, every hose, every line, every wire, all this stuff. I told him I'm willing to give him an arm and a leg just as much as you paid for this car 
for all the parts that he had on his car on the front end, not including the engine transmission or headlights or any of that stuff because we have that stuff. Now, after offering him that huge price, he went ahead and threw in a bunch of extra stuff. But the crazy part is once we got the deal kind of like all rearranged, we, you know, we, the deal was locked in. We went ahead and drove six hours to go meet him to check out these parts and purchase these parts. Um, it just started getting really sketchy real fast. Reason being is because me and my brother pulled up at 3 p.m. at that location um, and we were literally waiting for a good three hours. When it hit three, he said, I'm only like, there's a lot of traffic. I'll be there in an hour tops. Uh, we wait till literally four o'clock. He's like, hey man, um, it's still gonna be like another hour. Traffic's an absolute joke. Um, and then, you know, at 4.30, we text him, how are things going? No response, five comes. We text him, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey man, I got pulled over. Um, you know, it's still gonna take me some more time to get there, probably 30 minutes. Text him in 30 minutes um, and he's just still not responding. Like, hey bro, like dude, like what's going on? I'm not gonna stay here. We drove six hours to meet you somewhere and you know, you're just not coming. Clearly looks like you just don't care. Long story short, he ends up showing up like three hours later, um, which was seriously bazonkers. Like me and my brother literally lost it. We kind of lost our patience at that point. We literally feel like we just got kind of stood up, but we also didn't want to just head back because again, it was a long drive and uh, we really wanted these parts because again, exact same color, CS opportunity. Like when do you get an opportunity like this? You got, we actually got this project a few months back and I told you guys that we had something sick back there, but getting parts for it is so difficult to find. So after hours and hours and hours of waiting, thankfully he finally showed up, but when he showed up, he showed up with his mom and his dad, which typically that's good news, right? But in this scenario was probably the worst news we ever had because as soon as they pulled up, the mother came out, she was already kind of tense saying like, hey, you know, it's already getting kind of late. Um, you know, I, I, as soon as they pulled up, I'm like going to the trunk and I was trying to see what exactly they got because everything's in garbage bags. Like I'm trying to see what exactly did they bring everything that we agreed upon for the set price that we agreed upon. And uh, she's like, hey, I'm in a rush. They came in two cars. She's like, if you just give me the money right now, I'll head back home. Um, so I'm out of the way and then they can go ahead and start unloading everything. And I said, that's not how this works. Um, you know, I need to see the parts first. And she's like, no, I need to see the money first. I'm not unloading anything, wasting my time or putting it in your car. And she starts losing it. And I basically lost it too. I basically told her, I'm not going to give you any money until I see that everything that we talked about is there, period. Like I did not waste my time coming out for this drive to give you this amount of money for a gamble on whether or not you brought everything because I didn't even see pictures of everything before they even showed up. So that being said, I stuck to my gut feeling and thankfully that I did because after actually waiting for them to pull everything out, they were missing about two to three grand worth of parts that were on our list. Um, that was actually some of the most major parts that we really needed uh, to get moving forward on this build. A lot of the front end crash bar parts, the parts that we really needed to start getting this framework started, they didn't even bring that. They showed me actually photos of that, but they never actually even brought that. And they said they had it when they showed up there. They said, we have absolutely everything on the list. We double checked the list. So long story short, they were trying to finesse us a couple grand on top. Um, and I, I mean, you know, even if we got finesse, we pretty much would have still got the parts but at least these parts, not everything we asked for. We still would've got these parts, but for almost close to retail value because again, if they screwed us over. We were literally checking every single part for like an hour, hour and a half. We were, we were there till literally the sun went down and I was super uncomfortable in doing this transaction at night because yeah, it's a lot of money. I don't know these people. They're acting sketched out with just me and my brother in the middle of nowhere. This wasn't in LA. This was like literally in the middle of the mountains. So yeah, it was a little sketchy, uh, but end of the day, we got what we needed. We made the deal happen. Uh, we still were able to negotiate everything that we didn't get. Um, it was just such a hassle to get these parts. But again, when everything comes at a good deal, it comes at a cost. Thankfully, not an arm and a limb, so we're good to go.